Okay, everyone, we'll go ahead and get started. I thought Sarah was going to be joining us, but maybe she'll join us later. All right. So uh, yeah, I'm covering Power Hour. It's my first time covering Power Hour. I used to cover, I used to teach the strength at my other gym in New York City. So this is fun for me. Um, so we're going to warm up with some mobility and then uh, we're going to get right into it, right? So A1, A2, uh, let's talk about programming. So we're going to do a set of A1, do a set of A2. And you'll notice right below the second number of that letter, there's like a times five, times whatever. That's going to be the amount of times we're going to superset or do both of those movements back to back. So we're going to start with a single leg kettlebell dumbbell deadlift. So standing on one leg, we're going to hold the object in both hands. And then we have a tempo, right? So the first number is going to be the lowering portion of the weight, the eccentric portion. So from when we're holding our kettlebell and then reaching down to the floor, that's going to be three seconds on the way down. Then you're going to pause for one second. And then the X means you're going to stand up quickly, right? And then you're going to pause for one second at the top. It might not make any sense to you right now. That's totally okay. I'll go over it in more detail in a little bit, right? And you're going to do 10 on each leg. Then after that, we have kettlebell dumbbell lead press, right? That's going to be a seated press. For those of us who don't have flexible hamstrings and round our back in that seated position, we'll go over some alternatives. You're going to do six on each side. So we're going to do that for five sets. B1, B2. Uh, we're going to hold the bottom of a push-up for 20 to 30 seconds. And then we're going to put that with a single leg hip thrust with a two-second pause at the top. If you have a chair or a surface around, that would be better. Uh, that's more ideal rather than lying on your back doing the movement. Um, then we're going to do that for four sets. C1, C2. It's going to be a glute bridge single arm floor press uh, with a tempo as well. Three seconds on the way down. One second pause with the elbow on the floor. Three seconds on the way up with no pause at the top. And you're going to be doing, I did not write the amount of reps. Wait, hold on. Looking at the wrong one. Yeah. So we're going to be doing eight reps on each side and I didn't write that. Uh, C2 is going to be dumbbell kettlebell pullover. So working on those lats from your floor. Uh, we'll have a tempo on that as well. So for four sets and then D1, D2, hold the top of a push up weighted, right? So we have a kettlebell or a plate around. We might be able to put it onto our back as we press out of that push up. If not, not a big deal. Or if you have a kid around, have your kid lying your back. Uh, and then you're going to do a double Turkish get up. So that's probably going to be some to learn today. Any questions, you guys? Questions? No. Okay, cool. So we're going to go ahead and start with our mobility. So we're going to get onto the ground and I want you guys to be on all four. We're going to start with our cat cow. All right. So I'm particular about the cat cow. I like you to do them really slow and controlled and think of initiating each movement from the pelvis or the tailbone. So in my cat right now, rounding to the back, I'll do to tuck my tailbone up to the ceiling. And then one vertebrae is beginning to drop, lifting my way up to the top of the spine. The top of the spine is the last thing to move. And then from here, I'm going into my cap by tucking my belt buckle up to my chin, squeezing my butt, squeezing my abs. My spine begins to rise one vertebrae at a time, making my way up to the top of the neck where the last thing to drop. Initiating it. Good job, guys. From here, we're going to go into groiner. So I want you to be on all four. You're going to extend one heel out. Your toe is going to be up. You're going to kickstand your back toe. You're going to rock your butt back. And then rock forward. I'm going to be 12 on each side. Hey Debbie. When you guys are done with your groiner on each side, we're next going to go 
into a bridge, but we have an alternative, okay? So if you can't do a bridge, you're gonna be doing a cobra. So we're gonna lie on our back, right? You're gonna take your palms, have your fingertips facing you, pressing down into the floor. Then from here, we're gonna press the hips up, right? Everything off the ground. We're gonna hang out here for about 20 seconds. If that's not possible for you, which is totally okay, we'll work up to it. You're gonna go just into your cobra. So from here, keeping the shoulders back, pressing up. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get to position, and then we're gonna go up in five, four, three, two, and one. Good job, you guys. Really think of extending through the shoulders. You are about 10 seconds in. Five, four, three, two, and one. Good job, you guys. And then from there, you're gonna stay on your back or you're gonna go onto your back and you're gonna give me 20 glute bridge, lifting the hips up and then back down. Good, pushing those heels through the floor. Last thing, you guys will go ahead and stand on up. Or actually, yeah, you can stand on up. So if you have a light weight, if you have like a heavier weight, you might not be able to do this. Maybe you can grab something in your apartment or place that's like five to 10 pounds. We're gonna do some halos. So you wanna think of keeping the object close to the face and then think that you're trying to like wrap it around uh, without touching your head, but keeping it close. You're gonna go ahead and give me five one direction and then five in the other direction, right? So think it's going completely around the head. Loosening up those shoulders. Got a lot of dogs in class today. Awesome work, you guys. So I'm gonna send over uh, part A again because I'm adjusting the rep scheme on um, part A. Okay, so we're gonna talk about what we're doing first. We're gonna jump right into it. So it's gonna be single leg kettlebell, dead, kettlebell or dumbbell deadlift with a tempo of three seconds on the way down, one second pause, one at the top. So what is that gonna look like? So if I have just one dumbbell or whatever, or one kettlebell, we're gonna hold it in both hands, right? And then from here, I'm gonna stand on one leg. I'm gonna keep the knee softly bent. I'm gonna think of just pushing the hips straight back. Right, shoulder squeeze back. So three, two, one. I'm gonna pause for one second and then lift the chest and then pause for one second at the top, right? So three, two, one, pause, pause. Three, two, one, pause, and pause. You're gonna do seven on each side, right? So you're gonna challenge your ankle stability a bit there as well. And then be wary of your hip shifting. So as you push your butt back, don't let your hips, like, sh that's a very bad example. We don't want the hips to shift this way. That's when we lose our balance. Keep that in mind. Go ahead and begin with your first set of seven, you guys. Squeeze glutes, squeeze abs. First set of seven. And then we'll go over the next movement. You can hold it in both hands. Can you show me one more time, please? Yeah. So think of holding your object in both hands, right? And then we're gonna stand on one leg, April. Your knee's gonna be softly bent. Squeeze the armpits, right? So the back stays flat. And then three, two, one. Pause for one second, make shin, and then stand. Three, two, one. Pause and stand. Also, if like we're on carpet or anything and we're barefoot, it might be a little bit challenging too if the carpet's like really soft, so that's something to consider, or if your yoga mat's really mushy. Good job, you guys. Squeeze those abs, find that focal point. Good, April. Nice, Miho. Nice, Kiangsi. Good 
So seven each leg. And then when we're done, we're gonna sit on the ground or you're gonna watch me actually. Cool, you guys. So next is your Z press. So for our Z press, we're gonna sit on the ground and we're gonna to wanna to sit super upright and ideally we'll keep our legs squeezed together. But uh, for some of us that might be hard, right? Our lower back might round. So if your lower back is rounding in this position, you're gonna bend your knees, right? And try to sit up like this. If your lower back is still rounding, we're just gonna have you switch to a seated movement. We don't wanna compromise your low back, right? But if you're able to sit upright with your low back flat in this position, squeezing the legs together, you're gonna to be doing your Z press from here. So I'm gonna think of holding my kettlebell or dumbbell on one side. I'm gonna press up, bicep by the ear, and then bring it back down. I know that most of us have generally a heavier weight, so this is not gonna be an option to strict press up on this position. I'm gonna give you the option to do standing push press with a tempo, right? So for those of you that can't do Z press because your weight's heavy, um, or possibly it's compromising your low back. Actually, I said standing, let's do seated. So we're gonna get on our chair and we're gonna sit down. So from here, sitting up against your chair, back is flat, uh, you're gonna go ahead and press out, right? That's if your back is rounding. If your back is not rounding, but your weight is too heavy to strict press it, we're then gonna go to standing and we're gonna push press. You're gonna lock out and then bring it down. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Six on each side. So hopefully you figured out where you fall within those three options. Nice, you guys. Really squeeze those abs, sitting up tall. Awesome, we all have weights that we're able to do it with. And then once you finish your six on each side, you can rest in like 30 seconds or so, and then you're gonna go back to your single leg kettlebell deadlift. We have four more sets. Nice work squad, squeezing those abs, find that focal point on that deadlift. Good MJ, nice April.
Nice work squats, squeezing butt, squeezing abs on those Z presses. Is it five rounds total? Yeah, so we already did one together and you have four more, yeah. <laughs> Nice work, Elaine. Good job, Stefano. Nice work, Debbie. Can't see you, but I know you're there. Nice, Kyungsi. Nice, Elaine. Looking good, you guys. Just remember to squeeze and stay tight. Nice, Debbie.
Nice work, MJ. Nice, Stefano. Nice, Elaine. Good job, you guys. You're looking really stable on those single leg deadlifts. Nice, April. Nice work, April, there you go. Good job, squad. Squeeze butt, squeeze abs in that seated position, sitting super tall. If you just finished set four and you feel like your hamstrings can't take any more on set five, that's fine. You can call it. But for those of you who have been in class consistently, you can, I think you can handle your five sets. But I'm just saying, if you haven't been in class in a while and you just started getting back into working out, then probably don't do as many if you're not feeling it in the back of the legs. As in if they're tired and fatigued. We have three minutes left until we're gonna move on to the next two movements. Last minute.
Nice work, you guys. Okay, let's talk about what's next, right? So we have hold the bottom of a push up for 20 to 30 seconds. So you guys, I'm gonna leave you responsible to count your time here, right? So ideally you'll start at the top and then you're gonna go down to the bottom of your push up, squeeze butt, squeeze abs, ideally 20 to 30 seconds. I know this is gonna be really challenging for some of us, right? And if you can't get uh, your 20 seconds, we'll do with our 10, but I really want you to focus on squeezing your butt and challenging yourself. So if maybe going down to your knees allows you to sustain it a little bit longer, then you can go down to your knees, all right? Then once you're done with that, if you have a chair near you, you can do this next movement on the chair, or you can do it lying on your back. We're gonna do a single leg hip thrust with a two second pause. Single leg stuff tends to be pretty challenging already without any weight. So maybe consider not doing it with your dumbbell or with a two second pause it makes it really challenging. So from here, lying on my back, I'm gonna lift my hips up. I'm gonna pause for one and two, and then back down. One and two, and then back down. I have like a chair, Right, so if you guys have a chair near you or a couch, you can do it up here as well. You get a little bit more range of motion. So one and two, and then back down. Right, you're gonna do seven on each side. You guys are gonna give me four sets. Wait, is it seven? Did I say seven? I had said, uh, yeah, six to eight reps, all right? So six to eight on your single leg hip thrust, and then you're gonna be doing that for four sets, just back to back. All right, you guys, I'm gonna give you 12 minutes. <laughs> Can you put it in the chat, please? Yes. Oh yeah, so, sorry people. Some of you guys got here later and you didn't see any of what I was talking about. Here we go. Good job, squad. So just do your best holding that push up for five to 10 seconds if 20 seconds is not gonna happen. And then onto your single leg hip thrust with a two second pause at the top. Remember, you can do just body weight if um, the weight is too much and we're having a hard time holding it for two seconds. Nice work, Miho. Good job, you guys. Nice, MJ.
Good job, you guys. Keep it up. Fight to stay engaged. I know those single leg hip thrusts are challenging and not fun. About six minutes, if you need it. How many sets are we doing? Four. Okay. Everyone's dogs are just like stealing the show right now. <laughs> so funny. Nice, Elaine. Hey, Corey, is it um when you're doing the single leg hip thrust, is your head up or down rested? Down rested. Down, okay, thank you. Good job, you guys, keep it up. Nice work squad, squeeze butt, squeeze abs, stay as tight as possible on that bottom of push-up hold. We have about four more minutes. If you don't finish all four sets, that's okay. Within the four minutes left.
Okay, good job, you guys. Just in a minute, we'll go over what's up, what we have next. Good job, you guys. Okay, so up next, uh, and this, uh, yeah, might probably be like the last thing we'll get through, but I'll go over what the other last two movements are. So if you want to feel free to stick around and do them on your own when the time is up, you may. All right, so we have flute bridge, single arm floor press next with the tempo. Okay, so this is how it's going to work, you guys. We're going to be on our back. We're going to keep the hips elevated. I'm going to hold the dumbbell on one side. Hips are going to be up. So it's going to be, so from the floor, I'm going to go up three seconds, three, two, one, three, two, one. I only pause when my elbow's on the floor. Three, two, one, three, two, one. Pause one second on the floor. Three, two, one, three, two, one. You're gonna do six each side. And then after you do six each side, you're gonna go to a dumbbell pullover. So you're gonna lie on your back. You're gonna hold your kettlebell upside down or you're gonna hold your dumbbell upside down just like this. And then from here, I'm gonna think of keeping my arms pretty much straight, maybe slightly bent on the elbows, and I'm gonna have my dumbbell come behind me, and we're gonna do a tempo. It's gonna be one and two. I'm gonna pause for one second with the dumbbell or the kettlebell touching the ground, and then I'm gonna bring it back above the chest. So one and two, pause for one second, and then bring it back above the chest, all right? I'm more concerned with this movement, so you guys, can you show me what your pullover looks like? Try that out for me. Just give me a couple reps, seeing that you know how to do it, making sure your weight is appropriate, not too heavy. And we want to pause for one second with it touching the floor. And you're going to feel like those lats engage, right? Because we're pulling the dumbbell over. Just give me like three reps. Awesome squad. All right, so you're going to do your glute bridge, single arm floor press, six each side. Think of three seconds on the way up, three seconds on the way down. And then you're going to go to your pullover of eight to 10 reps with one second pause on the floor for four sets. Sorry, Corey, we're flat on the ground for the pullover, right? Yes. Just turning bent. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Of course. Uh, slow down there, MJ. <laughs> Good job, you guys. I know tempo training is annoying and boring sometimes, but it can give you great, good results. Slowing things down, feeling out the entire movement. Great, good results. Wow, I need to up my vocabulary. I'm tired of being at home. <laughs> Good job, you guys. Keeping those hips up on that single arm floor press. Four sets, you guys.
Nice work, Miho. There we go, April. Nice, Hyangsi. Good job, squad. Keeping that tempo in mind on that loop bridge floor press. Three seconds on the way down, three seconds on the way up. Good job, squad. Pushing those heels to the floor, hips fully extended. Also, you guys, make sure your shoulders are up to your ears, so pull your shoulders down. If you're down in that position, make sure your shoulders are down.
Good job, squad. When you finish your four sets, you can just hang out until you're done. Everyone else is done. <laughs> Your dog Miho is so cute. <laughs> it's like, okay, pull me over now. <laughs> Stefano, are you done with this one? Yeah, okay. MJ, are you done too? Yeah, okay, cool. I'll go over what we have next. What's next is totally optional. You guys did a lot of work already, um, but I'll show you what we have anyway in, a, in about a minute or two, and then you guys can make the choice if you wanna do it or not for four, three sets. Oh wait, did I say three sets? Four sets, three or four. Okay, squad, I'm gonna go over what we have last. Okay, so even if you only get like one or two rounds of it in and you have to leave at 11.30 or whatever, that's okay. So let's go over uh, the hold top of a weighted, hold the top of a weighted push-up. Okay, so if you have plates near you, and I already saw Elaine here, she was a, Elaine doing it, she was able to put a plate on her back from the holding the bottom of a push-up. But if you can, you can also maybe put your dumbbell or something on your back, right? This is an option, it's kind of extreme. <laughs> but it can work, right? So then from here, I'm gonna press up out of my push-up. Actually, I would want that to be a lot higher or else it's gonna fall. So I would probably not use this dumbbell because it's a little too heavy for me, but ideally I would have like, if it was a 10 pound or something and it sat up here, I wouldn't risk it falling and only be some on concrete here. You know, press out and whatever you weight, what weight you have, you guys try to have it on your upper back rather than your lower back because that's where it would fall down. I'm not gonna take the time to show you with my dumbbell, but for example, this plate here, right? If it's up here, it's more likely not gonna fall or slide down to where was, if it's here, once I start to press out, I can start to feel it move, all right? Uh, so you're gonna hold that for 40 to, seconds to a minute, ideally, and then afterwards we have a dual get up. So dual get up is gonna require a lot of shoulder flexibility and maybe your weights are too heavy for it. If that's the case, and you can possibly just hold something lighter or even keep both of your hands above your head. So I'm gonna go through it with you guys real quick. So I want you guys to go ahead and sit on the ground with your legs in front, and then we're gonna reach our arms above our head. Cool, and then from here, we're gonna bring our left heel beside our butt, and then we're gonna bring our right heel inside our knee, or inside our thigh, just like that. So right, I'm gonna show you again. So from here, left heel, bend the knee, and then bring the right heel on the left knee. And then from here, I'm gonna shift my weight up to my knees, and then I'm gonna to turn to the right as I stand, and then I'm gonna go back down. So from where you guys are at, go ahead and shift up to your knees. Then we're gonna to turn to the right, step with the left leg, and then stand. Good, and then from here, we're gonna step back down on the right knee, 
Bring that left knee besides the right heel and then sit back down. So if this is challenging enough as is without any weight, then that's awesome. You're gonna practice the shin box exercise, which is this, right? And then you can do the other side by extending both legs, bend the right heel besides the right butt, and then bring the left knee, left heel on the right knee, and then you'll shift up to your knees and then turn to your right. All right, I know this is kind of tricky, and if you haven't done this before, you might be super confused, but I think most of you guys can get it, all right? So you're gonna be doing, uh, I didn't put it in the chat. You're gonna do three on each side of your double get up, um, along with your, wow, I did not mean to put that in there. Opened up something else on my computer. There we go. Hold the top of a push up 40 to 60 seconds with your double Turkish get up, three on each side for four sets, three to four sets. All right, squad. And if your Turkish get up is hard enough without weights, then do it without weights. I'm gonna sit this one out. <laughs> no worries, April. All right. All right. Thank yeah. you. Welcome. Have a good weekend. Bye, you too. Thanks. Okay, when I go from up yeah. to down, my legs are in a diff are in the the opposite position as when I started. Let me see. So let's do it together. Go ahead and sit with your legs straight, Miho, and your hands up. Okay, so let's bend your left knee, bring it beside your butt, your heel. Go ahead and then bend your right knee and bring your right heel on your left knee. Good, and now let's shift our weight up to the knees. Good. And so now we're turning to whatever direction that knee is pointing. So we're gonna turn to our right as we lift the left leg off the ground. And now we're gonna stand. And then now go back to a lunge on your left knee to the floor. I'm sorry, your right knee. Oh God, that's why I'm screwing you up. Jesus, I'm so sorry. Yeah, so right knee. Now right knee to the floor. Good. And then you're gonna bring your left knee to your right heel. So what's happening, Miho, is when you're in this position, right, you wanna bring this knee to your heel so that the shin is you know, behind you, right? Does that make sense? So my heel, you need to go here so that we can sit back down. Yeah, that's better. Oh, God. Yeah, it's a little tricky. How, how do we do that with weight? We just hold it on two hands? Hold both uh, one dumbbell up like this, or you have two, just like this. And the biggest thing is you have to keep those arms locked out and keep reaching up. So even if you have small plates, something, or one plate. Good, MJ. Oh, I think you're doing a little bit different too as well, MJ. It's kind of confusing. So we want to think of, because you're more so, when we're here, right? Uh, we're I, I tried a bunch of times. I can't get my knee to uh, flex the direction required to do it. Ah, OK, all right. Well, at least you're making it to where you can get up, okay? <laughs> it's a more challenging. When we're in the gym, I like to do these. So next time I see you guys, we'll work on them. And then turn to your left and step up with your right leg, MJ. Or that's another way. <laughs> Nice, Debbie. There you go. Good, Elaine.
Oh no, MJ. <laughs> it's so tricky. I know if it's too heavy, then it just keeps rolling. <laughs> There we go, good. That's what I was trying to show you guys, but it was not happening. <laughs> oh, look, these are kind of fun without weight. I don't know yeah. what it's like with weight. Yeah, well, when they're out weight, they're called shin boxes. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely fun, because if you get to, into the groove of doing it right, it's like, oh, it's another way to get up and down. <laughs> so did you say you, you hold something on each in each hand? Yeah, so you can either hold one uh, one weight above your head, like one dumbbell the sides, or you're holding two kettlebells um, or two dumbbells. Okay. Yeah. Or a plate. Yeah, a plate works as well. Any type of weight like, where you can just lock your arms out. Good, Miho. Awesome work. Nice, MJ. Awesome work, you guys. 